and welcome to Five Frickin' Friends. If I seem a little exasperated with this intro, it's because it's about the 13th time I've done it. I'm Carol, and I'm covering for Linnea. You'll see her on Thursday. This week, we're talking about whether or not we think it's right for animals to compete for our entertainment. I am so not the person to talk to about this. My animal rights activism really extends to the point where, like, it only goes as far as I don't want to be shitty to animals. And so I will not be. I find wearing leather kind of creepy and Hannibal Lecter-like. And I'm lactose intolerant. So my dependency on animals really only extends so far. Like, very, very little. Um, so when it comes to, like, exploitation of animals... Because I feel like that's what this is about. There's not really a whole lot of animal, like competitive animal sports out there. There's no rule that dogs can't play basketball, but you never really see a dog playing basketball. When we're talking about animals competing, you've really only got like a couple of things. You've got horse races, dog races, cat shows, dog shows, cock fights, dog fights. And I find it very hard to defend most of those. When it comes to dog fights, the easiest to not defend, I think you are a shitty human being if you watch, participate, or uh, exploit animals for that purpose. Because, so you see, a long time ago, when we were still hunters and gatherers, we formed a sort of symbiotic relationship with some wolves. We bred, like, the most friendly of those wolves, and eventually the domestic canine came about. We took away all those things that made them ferocious, snarling beasts in the wild that could take down elk. But the important thing is, we domesticated this creature, and we took a feral animal, and over generations of selective breeding, we created a creature that is happy to see us when we get home. When you abuse that, you're a shitty person. That, that's, that's, there's no defending it. That, that's why everybody was like, Michael Vick's an asshole. And I think dog racing kind of falls into that same category. Look, racing is a trick. It's, it's a, teaching a dog to race is the same as teaching a dog to play fetch, play frisbee, sit, play dead, whatever. If you're teaching a dog a trick that ultimately harms it and then you discard it after it has done that trick to exhaustion, I think you're just as bad as Michael Vick. Then there's the others, uh, horse racing. I don't know anything about horses. I am not as enchanted by them as most young girls are. I never developed that sort of like affinity for horses. No, <laughs> don't like them, not one bit. Don't want them treated badly, just don't want them anywhere near me. I, I'm, I'm an advocate for a lot of causes. This is obviously a blind spot of mine. And it's not one I expect to like rectify in the near future, sorry. The least offensive competition for animals, which I think would be cat and dog shows. Uh, I think that the people who have like Grand Duchess Earldom the Third of Winky Poos or Mix a Lot, you know, with those kind of pompous dog names. I don't know. I I think purebred dogs are kind of shit. Cause to get a purebred, you have to do a lot of inbreeding, and inbreeding doesn't lead to the best of you know physical health for these animals. I don't really approve of that, but if you're talking about like the Purina dog shows where they like run, they do their little tricks, and those dogs seem happy. And so maybe, maybe they are, and maybe those kinds of dog shows aren't so bad. I hope, because I want to think that maybe humanity isn't shit. That being said, I think that if uh, we brought animals into our own competitive sports, maybe, you know, a gorilla on the football field, maybe we wouldn't be so apt to destroy them as we seem to be. Maybe if 
you know, there was a silverback linebacker, um, we would care about gorillas enough to bring them back from the brink of extinction. That would be neat, right? Then I might watch football. <laughs> <laughs>